All right. This is uh, another lesson we're going to get into. This is going to be about a uh, fall of Babylon. We can't talk about this enough. Revelations 10. I'm going to grab. But I'm going to start with Jeremiah 28 and 8. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. We can't bring that scripture out enough. Here we are. We're going to be in a times where there are going to be all types of wars going on. There's going to be all type of race wars, you know, international wars, local wars. You know, you, the, the, your day to day life as you know it is going to be completely changed and altered oh second estrus ah. excuse me i can have a long day at work this is second estrus chapter 15 verse 18 it says because of their pride well let me start a little bit before that I'm going to start at verse, I'm going to start at verse 14. Second Ezra 15 and verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. So everybody that's in the world that dwells therein, woe, woe means destruction. Why? Because there's a pending judgment that's set upon this place. Specifically the seed of evil, which is Babylon here in America. This place is going to be wiped off of the map. Verse 15, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. So draweth nigh mean it's not came yet. It's drawing near and it's going to happen. That's why the prophets were just reading about Jeremiah 28 and 8. They would say it before. So we're not just fear mongering. We're telling you what's going to happen and here's how you escape it. If you're an Israelite, of course, because that's who salvation is for. But. This is how you get saved. This is this is the judgment that's on this place. America's going to be destroyed completely. You're living in America. You're on American soil. How do you get saved? Is it getting a passport and leave it out of America? No. You get saved by being born again, being baptized in this word, in this in this living in this living water. Make a sincere effort to come back. Again, if you're an Israelite, following the laws of your commandments, not taking the MOTB, which some camps controversially tell you that the MOTB is not the CHIP. So there's a sword pronounced on this place. You want to be in a good standings with the Heavenly Father and His Son. But reading back again in Second Ezra 15 and 15, for the sword and their destruction draw off nigh. Sword meaning uh, it's not literally talking about a sword. It's talking about weapons. A sword can be a missile. A sword can be basically any instrumental weapon that's used to kill. That's what a, a sword is used for. You know, kill and cut. And one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hand. You're going to have people fighting against each other. Again, race wars going on. All types of people. It's going to be really rough out here. You know, uh, Man, the average person don't really. This place is hanging. It's on borrowed time, man. I'm surprised that this, that, that, this, that SHI ain't cracked yet. Reading on says, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. You saw, uh, what was that, during the pandemic, the, you had a whole bunch of uh, proud, funny I said proud, because what they, they call the proud boys too, uh, proud Edomites that stormed basically I think the Lansing Capitol building. And they had their swords on them. And they weren't. And, and what was their kings and their princes telling them? Stay at home. Don't come out. 
They're like, we're tired of being at home. We got to get back to work. We got to feed our family and support, you know, our family. So they weren't trying to hear that. That's on a micro scale. Imagine on a macro scale. Macro meaning a larger scale. Uh, verse 15, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to. So it's going to be lockdowns. Because a, a man is, you're in a city. So what does it mean, shall desire to go into a city? Meaning you shall desire to go to the next city, another city. And you can't go there. Read again, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Martial law. You got curfews. You had a curfew that was, uh, I forgot what they called it. They didn't call it martial law. I think they called it emergency executive action or state of emergency or something like that. You're going to have state of, the state of emergency was declared because of the uh, pestilence, the, uh, the DVOC 91 that was being spread, the beer bug. You're going to have lockdowns because of people getting killed, because of pestilences, because they want to basically know where you at. You have uh, your phone. It tracks you. you. It pings on these cell phone towers. They, let, they, they can find out exactly where you at. Reading on, it says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and the men shall be afraid. The houses being burglarized. People looking for foods and goods. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulations. A lack of bread. So. Remember, sec, uh, not second as Jeremiah 28 and verse 8. You know, the prophets are prophesied against evil. When you are in a famine, you do stuff that you normally wouldn't do in order to survive. You hear about 70 AD, you hear about even in North Korea and other places where people resorted to eating their children. Where they otherwise would not have resorted that resorted to that if they weren't hungry. So they're hungry. They're breaking into their neighbor's stuff. Looking to see if they got any food. You know when you are uh, starving, your, your sense, senses are, are heightened up. You know, you can uh, see better, smell better. So if anybody's cooking some, they're going to be on that. Uh, a famine... Of, of the word, hearing the word is coming, but also there's a famine of actual physical bread that's actually going to be coming. You already see in the news how they, uh, all these uh, farmer plants, the mysteriously being burned down. That's not no coincidence. This is, we are, we are getting, it. bro, milk is $10. I spent $10 for some milk, for a jug of milk. That is that is that is freaking ridiculous. You got inflation that's going to contribute to that. But guess what? If you uh, are on your Job chapter five real quick. This is Job chapter five. Verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Now remember the prophets prophesied against evil. So all the stuff that the prophets prophesied, the evil, it is not going to touch you if you have that mark of exemption in Ezekiel chapter 9. That mark. You got that hedge on you. Reading on how he's going to protect you. Job 5 and 20. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. So from famine, we're going to, I mean, you're going to eat. Verse 21, for thou shalt be hid 
from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. So we're going to be in the midst of a famine, but we're going to be just laughing. Those other people who are don't got the hedge around them, it's going to be funny. You were scoffing. You didn't want to hear the word of the Lord. Oh, look at you. Now, you, now your, uh, your stomach is touching your back. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. You know, you you wanted to uh, laugh at the prophet saying we we're wearing dresses and stuff like that. Oh, that's that's you. Why are you not laughing? Ain't ain't the ain't the saying a 2023 keep that same energy, keep that same energy. Uh, verse 22 again. At destruction of famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Earth. Meaning the animals. You're going to have wild beasts. New beasts newly created. Man, they're just going to, just like Daniel in the lion's den. They're just going to, man, walk right by you. Like it ain't nothing. We got bigger fish to fry. Reading on. Verse 24. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. And thou shalt visit thy habitation and shall not sin. Uh, that's that's pretty much. That's pretty much it. So we're going to be in a, a time where we're going to have a lot of people going to be scrambling and fighting for, you know, safety refuge. And the refuge you have is in Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, but they're not going to seek to that. So they're going to seek refuge in their astrologers, their stargazers, their tarot cards, and, and palm readers, and all type of stuff like that. But it's not going to be an answer. You know, and on that note, I'm going to give all praise and glory to you. How about Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Double honors to the elders of GMS Ruel. Peace, salutations, and shalom.